This time on Norfolk Perspectives, we're going to be talking about all the great stuff going on at the Botanical Garden, and I'll explain why I'm wearing this. And AMI Kids is a great place to, to see a transformation of kids to young adults. And then Recreation Parks and Open Space has a very special place in Lakewood you're going to want to hear about and hear. Stay tuned for some great stuff right here on Norfolk Perspectives. Welcome to Norfolk Perspectives. I'm Bob Batcher, and I would wear a pirate hat for only one place and one person, and that's the Botanical Garden. Kelly Walsh, how you doing? Good, good. Okay, I can take this off now. Yeah, good. I guess we can okay. take them off. Okay, why are we wearing pirate hats when it's, when it's all about azaleas and flowers and roses? And it's still certainly all about that, but we have our summer exhibit. Um, it's called The Voyage of Discovery, ah. and it has a piratey theme. Um, it also has the replica of the USS Constitution that was actually at Op sale, so some folks might have seen it, seen it there. You know, you just solved a mystery. I was out there for the blessing of the fleet, and all of a sudden I saw these guys in little black suits kind of carry off that, that exhibit, and that's yeah. where they were going. Yep, yep. So it's been blessed. Yes, yes. But it's not a pirate ship. No. But we, we actually have a pirate's cove, um, oh. so there's going to be this, this um, there's a replica of the USS Constitution, and then right across the make-believe waterway, there is a pirate's cove, which is Ooh. very cool. There's a platform, a crow's nest, ropes, all kinds of stuff to play around on. Are going to keep the two separate? Well, they're so they're very close together, but I you think have the, to kind of make believe a little bit. Well, but you know, I think in true history, I mean, that's one of the reasons we had the Constitution, because we had pirates, and I think they won. Well, we're going to have fun with the pirates. They're good pirates. So, um, <laughs> Only at the Potango Garden would yes, you have good pirates. Yes, absolutely. And the Voyage of Discovery is all around the garden, so you can have fun throughout the garden, um, decoding messages at Nautical Hill, and we have remote-controlled boats. I was, you know, I was, can I get, can I touch it? Yes, yes. That's so cool. It's a guy thing. But where's the remote control? <laughs> Oh, that's in the box. I didn't bring the remote control part. You can't do anything with it here. Uh, oh, yeah. I was going to let you talk to the audience, and I was going to play with a boat. Yeah. Okay. The boat's fun. The boat's I'd rather fun. talk to you anyway. And that's then we cool. have, look, and then we have this. This is very okay, cool. Okay, it's a mailbox. No, it isn't a mailbox. It is a it's what do you box. get when you cross a pirate swordsman with a... With a zucchini. That's one of the messages. There's six of these, I believe, throughout the whole garden. Okay. And you look and you have this message or this well, what riddle. What do know the answer? You have to open it up, oh. and then you get a message, and you get an answer. It's a squash buckler, and oh. then there's a code word. So if you go around to all of the treasure um, boxes, you'll get code words, and they all make up a message, and then you can get a prize. Cool. Now at the gift shop, is there an age limitation to this? You know what? It's kids of all ages, and certainly, cool. certainly the little ones. If they need help, mom and dad can um, can help them answer some of the riddles and all the decoding. So when you come to the garden, you can get a treasure map and um, just go around and um, have a lot of fun. And at the same time, we have the Butterfly House, um, which What's opened back? the same. Yep, it opened the same day on June 16th, and it's open until the 23rd. Our Voyage of Discovery um, exhibit is open until September 3rd. So lots of fun stuff going on at the garden. And the Butterfly House, I actually haven't been in it, but I heard it's amazing. Oh, because I tell you what, only on Norfolk Perspective would you be asked this question. Not on Wavy, not on TV40, uh, whatever that other station was, or any of these other stations, mm -hmm. but here you would be. There's a plant that butterflies live off of, and I was going to ask you how it's doing, because I planted it in my front yard mm -hmm. because my wife saw it. Well, there. there's a lot of plants that butterflies so you can do that really kind of like. Stuff. Yeah, and there's staff and volunteers that are in the butterfly house, and they are very knowledgeable about butterflies, and they can certainly help you. So it's very educational for kids and adults, and um, fun all at the same time. And it's such a great experience because you're in this structure, yeah. and butterflies are just flying around you're and landing on them. you, and yeah, yeah. So we're we're so happy, and Capital Group Companies is sponsoring both of these exhibits. So we're very excited about that. And I've got to say this, but I understand there's a buzz about the garden too. Yeah, our bee festival is coming up in August. It's Saturday, August 18th. Um, so a lot of fun, fresh honey, vendors, music, all kinds of fun stuff. So people really enjoyed it last year. So we're bringing it back. Cool. How are the roses doing? 
the roses are still great. I mean, that's um, kind of a substance of the garden. Yeah, and it? actually, to get to the um, to exhibits, you will cross over the rose garden um, bridge. So you'll see the roses to the left, and there's still there's still roses there. Um, right now, the hydrangeas are in full bloom. Well, that was my next question. So I brought because, you a little gift. Yeah, because our normal centerpiece is a, is artificial flowers that were made by the, the, the garden arrangers in, at the Botanical Garden, but you've replaced them with real. Now, again, a discussion in the bachelor house, they are called what? These are hydrangeas. And they're growing right there at the garden, right? Yes, we have a whole, a whole garden dedicated to hydrangeas. I mean, there's hydrangeas around the garden, but there's one specific place where you can find hundreds upon hundreds, and they're just gorgeous right now, so. Before I get too deep with you then, I know you work at the garden. Mm -hmm. You tell the story of the garden. Yeah. Do you garden? Yeah, I'm. I'm actually learning. You're learning. I'm sort of learning. The experts. I, I leave the gardening to our expert gardeners. What do you mean, you're sort of learning? I love plants and flowers, yeah. and I very much have a lot of admiration for the gardeners and what they do, because um, it's a lot of work. So if I ask you. What causes it to get darker versus light pink and blue? I do know that. Really? What, it's the do pH, you? It's the pH level in the dirt. So if you put in a nail ground. in there, it'll change the color? That I don't know. Ah. <laughs> I don't know that. But, but tell I me more about pH. pirates. How's that? The pirates, it's so much fun. Um, the, I, I can't wait to hear all the feedback from all the folks out there. Um, it's going to be a lot, a lot of fun. So. These summer exhibits have really become... Milestones in the yeah. year. I mean, you have, you know, when, now I kind of think when I think of the garden, I don't just think of azaleas or roses, but the garden of lights mm -hmm. and the summer exhibit, the Mother's Day uh, plant sale. Yes. So you've got these kind of iconic moments. Yeah, and, and we also have um, coming up in June, July, throughout the summer months, we have um, our com our summer concert series, um, Dancing Through the Decades, and it um, starts out in June, the 30s and 40s, um, then it goes to yeah, July, okay, 50s there. and 60s, good there. Um, then it goes on from there, so right. um, a lot of fun throughout the summer, and all of this information can certainly be found on our website. Where you can also find out about getting an annual membership, yes. so you can participate in all of this stuff. Yeah, and I would actually really recommend getting the annual membership. It's for a family, um, and it includes six people in your vehicle, um, and you can come as much as you want, and the exhibits are free. Um, once you pay your admission, so you don't have an additional fee um, for that. And certainly, if you're a member, you just come on in. So, Sounds definitely, super. definitely recommend it. And um, yeah, you don't want to miss the summer exhibit, The Voyage of Discovery. It's incredible. Cool. And it's all about the pH. Kelly, thank you <laughs> for thank coming you. Thanks Thank for you. Thank you. You guys are doing them, really bringing a qu great quality of life, not just for kids, but kids of all ages. That's right, kids of all garden. ages. Speaking of kids, we're going to hear about MII kids when you come back. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Norfolk Perspectives. You know, we talked about the gardens being a great place for uh, kids at heart. We got two people on the sofa who have a heart for kids. Um, Dr. Uh, Gwen Cherry, how you doing? Very well, thank you, sir. I'm going to have to ask you, who are you with now? Because you've been on that sofa before, and it's always been about kids. But you're all <laughs> about kids, aren't you? I am. You're the executive director. I'm the executive director at AMI Kids Norfolk, and um, we're located um, 351 Avery Street. Now, AMI stands for? Uh, the Associated Marine Institute, Incorporated, and we're um, based in Tampa, Florida, and we're a national nonprofit. Okay. Yeah. They're and DDG, Board of Directors, aren't you glad I asked her that question, not you? <laughs> she gets the hard questions. Yeah. <laughs> now, you have not been on the sofa before, but we go way, way back. Sure. And, and what, what, what appealed to you to be on the board? 
Um, I, I had some um, friends who were on the board and they talked about um, the difference they were making in helping kids who just needed a second chance. Kids who maybe had not seen another option of behavior wise or things that they could do with their lives. And so um, I joined the board a few years ago and uh, we've been reaching out in the community to make sure that people know that that we're we're there actually in the work that we do and that really that these children the, are, are our children it's community's kids and just to let people know that that they could use um, their help too. I can't tell you how many times I've heard my peers say boy I'm glad I'm not a kid anymore but that means a lot when you hear that what what do you think of when I mean I'm thinking that it's still a great time to be a child you know, if we can keep them in that child's place and they mm -hmm. can grow and learn and be content and secure in their world. Now, who are the, who are your, who are the kids that you're looking out for? You say there are kids, but you're very, you have a very special relationship with these kids. We do. Uh, these are uh, children that are referred through Norfolk Juvenile Court Services Unit or Norfolk Public Schools, uh, children who have been suspended from school, who really need a second chance to transform their lives and give an, and mm -hmm. basically what we do is give them another opportunity to separate them from that troubled past so they can focus on a brighter future. And I guess that person who had the successful childhood or probably instead of saying, I'm glad I'm not a kid, I wish I was a kid. Because yeah. you use the word child and there's something about child yeah. that these kids are losing their childhood, though, aren't they? They are. They're, they're put in a position where they have to make decisions that they're not quite ready to make. Um, they are placed in a world wherein their, their behaviors have placed them in a position where they have adult consequences that they're not quite ready for. So simply preparing them to come to a place where they can uh, learn, they can grow, and they can plan their future. Now, Didi, there's no silver bullet, though. So what do you find in working with the kids that, that really helps out? I think uh, most importantly is letting them know that they do have options. Actually, AMI Kids was started um, in the 1940s by, I'm sorry, in the 60s by judges actually, and the judges Ooh, hello. and the judges understood that there were children who. Um, did not need to be incarcerated, but they needed corrective action. So that's how the program started, by working with kids, showing them examples that there are other options, giving them um, direction. And we actually help kids with their GEDs. We have GED graduations. So we try to make sure that the kids get another version of what's a good positive direction as opposed to what they've known all along. I was going to say, because it's not really, you know, I mean, yeah, there's, it's a slippery slope. You get them into the penal system, mm -hmm. and how do you get out, right? right? And the judges really like the program mm -hmm. because it gives them options. Mm -hmm. What kind of options do they have then? They have options to report to AMI on a daily basis to come to school, to prepare to return to the community. And um, many of our students graduate uh, from AMI and they go straight to college because they earn a GED while there. Wonderful. Yeah. So I'm sensing, Gwen, and I know you, mm -hmm. it's not a victim thing, right? No. There's accountability? There's accountability because basically our program consists of a personal growth model that incorporates uh, education, behavior modification, as well as treatment so they can learn how they connect so that they can understand their direction and their purpose. And by the time they leave us, they are truly transformed because now they take responsibility for their life. They care about what they're doing. Um, they learn to be respectful. And then AMI Kids Norfolk is a family. And so we welcome our, our children home when we get them. That's cool because some of these kids feel like there is no home. Right. Okay, there's a guy that's not on this sofa today. Mm -hmm that is on the sofa, right? Yes. <laughs> and that is uh, Greg Underwood. Yes. Okay, let's pretend he's not watching. I mean, wh why is he involved in this? And who is Greg Underwood? <laughs> Greg Underwood is <laughs> Norfolk's uh, Commonwealth's attorney, and he is also AMI's chairman of our board. Yeah. And um, Greg is also out there and understands that, that children just need a program like this to give kids examples and um, skills, life skills. And he's, I mean, and he's in a field as the, uh, that is encouraged to say lock to them lock up them and up. Yeah. deal with it, right? Right. But he also understands mm -hmm. that there are kids who it doesn't, um, it's not going to help them if they're locked up. 
Let me talk about, uh, let's talk about the kids who aren't in the system yet. Mm -hmm. What kinds of things should a parent or a family member be, or the community be looking at for kids to prevent them from maybe even having to become involved with AMI, AMI kids until they are coming to a fundraiser? I tell you, simply being involved uh, in their child's life, you know, understanding that socially and emotionally the children need them. You know, not so much what they can give to them, but, but simply need them to help guide them, you know, into adulthood. And simply spending time with them, understanding them, and remembering what it was like when they were children and when they did not get what they need. You know, how can they in turn give this to their child now to ensure their success? Now, well, now we're going to get into the selling mode. We're going to finally get there because you're having sure. a fundraiser. We are going to have a wonderful luncheon, and it's on um, Wednesday, June 27th. And the purpose of the luncheon is to uh, recognize, actually, some people in the community who are working with kids so that they don't get to us. Mm -hmm. So we have a guest speaker, um, Dr. Ish Major, is a regular guest um, on the Today Show, and he is coming into town um, to be our guest speaker. Um, WTKR News Channel 3's anchor Barbara Sierra is going to be our MC. Boy, there's and some name dropping there, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Just a little. And um, so we're going to have a luncheon. It's going to raise awareness for the program we are raising monies because all programs need mm -hmm. operating funds mm -hmm. and um, we want to recognize some people in the community who are embracing the children so that we don't even see them mm -hmm. that's that's the cool part about it and now you can say that you guys have been regular guests on Norfolk perspectives I as well as the Today Show with <laughs> I'm excited to say that <laughs> Thank Say you. hello to Barbara for me, too. Okay, is there, i got to ask this. Is there a phone number? Yes. Uh, AMI Kids Norfolk, 757-545-5437. How about a website or something you can go to? Uh, AMIKids.org. All right. And, yeah. you know, I, I loved what you said about getting to the kids before they get in the mm -hmm. system. Sure. Mm -hmm. We don't want to see them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you for everything that you guys are doing to invest in the future of our kids, but also bringing the message to our viewer of how they can get engaged. So that phone number again? 757-545-5437. Okay, thanks a lot. Take, speaking Thank about you. it, I don't think she's going to want me to call, call her a kid, but she's a kid with a violin. Stay tuned and find out some great stuff about the violin and her. Stay tuned. <laughs> throw away money on wasted electricity, you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Welcome back to Know for Perspective. You are in for a treat. Uh, Kimberly Haywood, Recreation Specialist with uh, Recreation Parks and Open Space. How you doing? That's fine. Okay, you have this pleasure of hanging out at the Lakewood Dance and Music Center. What is that called over there? Because it's just a place of magic. I love it. Lakewood Dance, Dance and Music, music Center. And we have everything. Yeah. Dance, I, all kinds of music classes, music camps, all the instruments, ballet, jazz, tap. We even have some fitness classes that are held at our center. Well, I was going to say, I, 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 don't tell anybody, but I was over there doing an on-location show a couple of years ago, and I walked in this back door, and there were these women in a room with a bunch of mirrors in weird positions. Pilates. Pilates. Mm -hmm. I can tell you, they got out Either of those yoga weird, or Pilates. They got out of those weird positions real quick and told me to get That's out. That's right. So I you know, so okay. So Kimberly uh, excuse me, Morgan okay. Cochran, right? Yes. Since you're the one sitting there holding that violin and protecting it, <laughs> you're the violinist. Yes. You don't do Pilates. No, I do not do Pilates. So you're on the other side of the house making beautiful music. Yes. Has it always been beautiful music? Well, when I started off, no. But once I get better, yes, it's gotten better, and I've been playing for a while. So. Now, wait a minute. Beautiful. I'm going to put you on the spot. You've been playing for a while, and you define a while by how much? 13 years. Holy moly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, according to your grandma, who I talked to before the taping, 
it was beautiful music then too. Yeah. So is that is that really the combination that you see of the kids coming over to Lakewood, having a passion to learn, and a supportive family environment? Yes, pretty much. Now, not every child is going to be as advanced as Morgan. We have maybe five or six at her level. Some children take it just to de just to get exposed to it. You know, they want to see if they like it. Because their mother made them do it. Sometimes okay. that too, and they sometimes get in group classes to see if they like it. It's nice to be well rounded. I mean, you don't really have to be a virtuoso, but sometimes if you like doing something, why not? You don't always have to be a virtuoso, just if you enjoy it. And um, they usually get in group classes. But Morgan um, went the private route with us. She's been taking since she was 10. She takes from Jennifer Scott, one of our teachers who's been teaching with us for several years, and she also is the orchestra director at um, Blair Middle. And she also took percussion from me at one time. Her brother took piano. She started off, I met her when she was four in creative dance, and she's taken ballet and guitar. So she has taken, am I leaving out something? No. She has taken so many things. Wow. Her grandmother's lovely, and they're just part of our Lakewood family. You don't just take a class when you come to Lakewood. Okay. You, you become part of a family. The average music student takes five, six, seven years, and I've watched her grow up, and it's, it's exciting. And, you know, wow. you sort of get emotional when they graduate, you, and then they come back, when they go to college, and they come back to visit. But, um, you know, I've just known her for so long. And you, you can't learn a musical instrument in um, three months. You know, it takes, no, I try to learn the clarinet for about years 50 years. It sounds like it. you're doing something, yeah. Right. Now, where is Lakewood? It's inside Lakewood Park. It's the second building in Lakewood Park. So it's behind the athletic office. It's right. Way, it's, mm -hmm. And it and it's that's Cromwell, right, or Willowwood? Willow. Willowwood that mm -hmm. goes through there, because not everybody knows. Listen for the beautiful music, or the guys grunting on the bouncy bouncy balls in the <laughs> exercise room. <laughs> Now, I, I, and I want to share with the audience, you, you sat on the sofa thinking you were just going to play the violin, and I wasn't going to talk to you, right? Right. So we'll get that across the table. Why is it you like to play the violin instead of talking to a host on Norfolk Perspectives? What, what is it about the violin that you like? The violin, I'm, I love playing because the music It's very pure and beautiful. And I've always wanted to play it, so when I was younger, I begged my grandmother into letting me play now, that's not the first violin you've had, right? No. Did it start off kind of? Yes, it started off really small. But. Now, so, okay, I, and, and your grandma's watching this show because she's in the studio. What made that special for you to keep, to keep coming back? Is it because she said yes to the first violin? Yeah. Now, has she had to encourage you to practice? Sometimes. And but that most, encouragement was appreciated all the yes, time, right? Yes, it was appreciated. Mm -hmm. How much do you practice a day? Sometimes 30 minutes to 20 minutes or an hour, depending. Depending on? How I feel in the uh, playing. <laughs> yeah. So what are you hoping to do with the violin? I may minor in it in college, the minor in music to keep playing. And I want to learn viola and maybe go into cello and everything else. Okay, now what's the difference? Can we, with the different instruments, I mean, because they're all strings, they're all this. Well, the size, and you know, the violin plays the more the melody and the higher notes, and then there's the viola, and then there's the cello that reads the bass clef. Um, violin is the treble clef, viola alto clef, and then the cello is the one where you play sitting down. Oh, I like that the bass one. Clef. Then the string bass is the biggest one, and you know, you stand up or either sit on a stool, and that plays the lowest notes. So okay. it's more, you know, a, a pitch. Thing. And the bigger the instrument, the lower the pitch. Okay, so if I took up violin, could I be the guy that came out on the stage and got the, the applause? The concert master, is yeah. Is that what that is? <laughs> the concert master. Then you tune the whole orchestra. It all comes. You know, I see, I have, I'm tone deaf, so that's why. <laughs> is that what you hope to be someday? Yes. Aha, now we got <laughs> to the core. You want to be able to be there before they do this. Yes, I do. Okay, you're going to play out um, our show. Yes. So are you going to, are you playing the drums, the violin, you're going to dance, or Pilates? What are you going to do? It's your choice. Violin. <laughs> okay. What are you going to play? Concerto number five, third movement. And this is a special piece, because you, right? Yes. Why is it a special piece to you? I played it at my, la well, second to last recital, and I've practiced it for a while. And it's by sights, and I love sights, so. Okay. Now you, I don't see a music stand here. You I want to play by memory. 
Hello. Well, I tell you what, I'm going to say thank you to you guys for being here. And I'm, I'm so proud of her for talking. I can't. <laughs> but I, I know she it. Was just That's cool. Perform. I'm so proud. She's on the way up. She's, no, I want to play. I don't want to talk. But you're, you're talked in. You're going to play. And she's a lovely yes. young lady, also. We're going to let Morgan Cochran play us out with Cantero to Number Five, Third Movement by Sites. Great, and she might even be in first position while doing it. Thanks for joining us. Give us a holler at 664-6510. And as usual, we want, it, it's a wonderful time to be in Norfolk just because of you and you and you, and I can't wait to hear it.